Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to rank every Pokemon game from worst to best in my opinion. I've wanted to do a Pokemon ranking for a long time, the same goes with The Legend of Zelda, but my Zelda ranking will be coming in either March or April. So, without further ado, let's get into it shall we? Number 18, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl fell short, disappointed with the graphics, not having Mega Pokemon at all, and offering not that much new content at all. And the absence of significant improvements left this remake below expectations for me, especially since this was one of the best stories in the whole Pokemon universe, and I think it would have been for the best if this game just released on the 3DS, since it does look like it. Number 17, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. While Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon did introduce Ultra Wormholes and improved mechanics, a big criticism I have with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it just wasn't necessary. And despite notable additions, I felt like this did lack the upgrade that Ultra, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon needed. And this enhanced port had some potential to come to Switch instead of 3DS. But since it did release a bad timing with the time it released being the first holiday season with the Nintendo Switch on market, the Switch could have had one extra holiday title besides Super Mario Odyssey and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but no, they had to release the last Pokemon game on the 3DS. I think it would have been a better move to develop Di the Diamond and Pearl remakes earlier, and then have Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon on the Switch instead, with two Pokemon games releasing in the holiday season, just on two different platforms. Number 16, Pokemon X and Y. X and Y did have enjoyable aspects, but the biggest problem with X and Y was probably the bugs. I do like the aesthetic of the Kalos region, I'm not gonna lie about that. And there was Pokemon that did stand out to me within this region. And despite technical issues, since it was hard to even get past that one part that the game just crashed on when I played it, the nostalgic X and Y anime did contribute me when it came to this game since I have nostalgia for the one episode of the X and Y anime when it came to chest pin and eating macaroons. Greninja was a standout Pokemon for me and if this game was to get a remaster in the future I just hope they fix it because France is, is somewhere I like to go to and X and Y just made it a hard to witness a place like France in the palm of my hands. Number 15, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Though fun, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee does have a big criticism for me, since if you are if you were a victim of Joy-Con's Rift, this would be really uncomfortable to play. The Pokemon Go inspired elements added uniqueness to the game, but the version locked starters were a bit disappointing in this unnecessary Pokemon Yellow remake. The Pokeball Plus feature was fun though, since you could take any Pokemon anywhere with you, but playing the entire game with it though just felt uncomfortable. It's a shame that such a cool accessory was only supported in this and Sword and Shield, but hopefully another 
thing like it will come in the future. But if let's but if Let's Go style gameplay was to return in a future game, I think it would work better as an optional mode than a full game. Number 14, Pokemon Yellow. Pokemon Yellow as the first third version of the Pokemon franchise did disappoint me a bit with the restricted starter choice and linear anime driven narrative. I mean, I like the Pokemon anime, it's great, but adapted into a game just feels a bit odd, and despite the drawbacks, features like Pikachu's visual presence and exclusive Pokemon did add some positive elements to the mix, but if you really wanted to experience the first generation of Pokemon, I wouldn't recommend Yellow. I'd recommend either Red or Blue, or Fire Red and Leaf Green. One of those two. Number 13, Pokemon Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon's departure from traditional gyms emphasizes on exploration and new characters provided in a, in a unique experience. While this game did receive mixed reviews from Pokemon fans, the game did deliver a fun journey through the Alola region, and modes like Pokepelago, even though it felt like a lot like a mobile game, was quite fun. And the multiplayer in Sun and Moon is probably the best in the whole Pokemon franchise, since there's four-way Pokemon battles, the Alola Festival, I mean, Sun and Moon have a lot to do. I'm just surprised they didn't bring some of these modes back in, in other games like Sword and Shield, Scarlet and Violet, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I mean, the modes in Sun and Moon had a potential to be a hitter in, a, in future Pokemon games. And the, starter, and the starters did stand out to me in Sun and Moon, especially Rowlet, Dartrex, and Decidueye. Number 12, Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Generation 2 excelled in lore building, introducing new legendary Pokemon and the concept of two regions. The diverse starter trio, post-game exploration in Kanto, and gameplay improvements did contribute to the series' rich legacy, and Gold and Silver was a standout to me because it introduced pre-evolutions like Pichu, Magby, and Elekith. And I do hope if Johto was to get a remake or a Legends game again, I hope there's more they can do with it. But I just think the remakes of Gold and Silver were better than the original game, since it's probably the definitive way to experience it. Number 11, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Fire Red and Leaf Green, being the first ever Pokemon remakes, are a fresh start. I like the Generation 3 graphics. Even if the graphics do look a bit dated today, it's an easier way to experience where Pokemon made its start, with the addition of Breeding and Shinies, which were added in Pokemon Gold and Silver. Number 10, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet being the first open world Pokemon game did offer a fresh experience in exploration and new Pokemon discovery. Despite the flaws in the Elite Four difficulty and predictable plot twist, the game did showcase innovation and expansion, especially with the DLCs, the Teal Mask, which was okay, and the Indigo Disc, which added the most value to the game. I wasn't the biggest fan of the starters in Scarlet and Violet, but I can say for now, 
that's why Coco was the standout starter for me. Even though I do feel like a Pokemon from the starter trio wouldn't fit on the Smash roster, but I would say one other Pokemon would. Number 9, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I think Pokemon Sword and Shield is the most underrated Pokemon game. Because this did the world building a lot better than Scarlet and Violet. Even though it wasn't fully open world. And as a UK born content creator, I appreciate the amount of detail they put in here. Especially in Motostoke and Holsbury. Which blends Liverpool and Manchester together. And since I was born within the Liverpool area, I appreciate the nods they put in here. Number 8, Pokemon Black and White. Black and White is a more unique generation compared to others, since it's the only one to receive a direct sequel. Changing seasons are, are reflected in real time since they change once a month, making it frustrating for completionists because specific Pokemon can only be caught in particular seasons. I do think a black and white remake should handle the season system a bit differently, similar to Stardew Valley, but not Animal Crossing. But overall, black and white was a fun game, but I would say the sequel's better. And I do like the starters in this game though. The starters of Unova are underrated. Especially Oshawott. Number 7, Pokemon Red and Blue. Even if Red and Blue released in 1996 in Japan, the games still hold up today. It may not have the capability to transfer Pokemon to other systems, but did have a capability to play on the big screen through Pokemon Stadium that released on the Nintendo 64. And if this game was to release again on Nintendo Switch Online, this is definitely one I would give a play. Number 6, Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. The one thing that made Generation 5 more unique from other generations, like I have said, is it it's the only to receive a direct sequel. But why did it stand out more than the 2010 original? Well, features such as po the Pokemon World Tournament, which allowed players to face trainers from past Pokemon games, and the Pokestar Studio mode, which I do hope they bring back in future Pokemon games, since it was a fun feature to play around with, and I do think if Unova were to get the remake treatment, that they would include both black and white and the sequels as well as an extra campaign acting as black and white 3. Unova is probably my third favorite Pokemon region and I hope it isn't done dirty like Diamond and Pearl with the remakes. And my fingers are crossed that Ilka Inc. does not develop it. Number 5. Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Heart Gold and Soul Silver stand out as remakes because there's so much to do. There are Pokemon that weren't present in the original Gold and Silver games that can be caught here. There are not 8 but 16 gym badges to obtain because both the inclusion of Johto and Kanto. And this is the best way to experience the Johto region. It sucks that copies of the game go for ridiculous prices on eBay and in retro game shops. Because this is in my top five favorite Pokemon games. Number four, Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum have some of the best Pokemon stories. The pacing may have not been great, but Platinum fixed that issue. I think it's sad that the remake did not include any form of Platinum content, and if Sinnoh were to get another remake in the future, please do not let Ilka Inc. develop it, because this 
game plays as the most important part of the Pokemon lore. I just don't want them to ruin it again with another mid remake. Number 3. Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. Generation 3 is my favourite generation of the whole Pokemon series. But why did Hoenn stand out to me so much? Well, the inclusion of double battles made battles more engaging. The Hoenn region probably has some of the best world building in the whole Pokemon franchise, thanks to its diverse environments and well laid out map. And Generation 3 probably has some of the best Pokemon designs in all of the Pokemon franchise. And the features within Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald made it more fun to play as well. Number 2. Pokemon Legends Arceus. The concept of the Pokemon Legends subseries is interesting since Pokemon Legends took us to Sinnoh's distant past, adding more to the Sinnoh lore. The semi-open world structure and the mission structure does remind me a bit of the Monster Hunter franchise, and it may not be fully open world like I hoped it to be, but Legends Arceus is unique from other Pokemon games, and it deserves credit for it. And I hope that this isn't the last that we see from the Legends sub-series, because I think there's loads of lore they can add in different regions. And I think Johto or Unova is probably going to be next. Number 1. Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were probably the best games to come out of the 3DS era. Which was a rough era for Pokemon in my opinion. And the reason that the Generation 3 remake stood out to me more was it had a more streamlined story from the 2002 original. The graphical overhaul is another appreciation I have here. Mega evolutions from X and Y add strategy to the remake, especially by adding it to the, st the story as well, with Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. And the Delta episode is the reason to come back to Hoenn all these years later. And Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire has a free fly mode as well with Mega Latios and Mega Latios. So guys, what did you think of my Hope Pokemon ranking? This is just the mainline Pokemon games. But I will probably do a video reviewing the spin-offs in the future. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.